That's it. They've broken the curse, right? This is it. And Arsenal are going to go and win the league. No, no, no. no. I mean, not like that. No, I, th I think they certainly can. I think that they're a, they're a, an excellent team who have broken this hoodoo that Manchester City held over them. Twelve defeats in a row. Yeah. I mean, that is something that they needed to certainly break, and that's why the victory is so much more than simply the three points. Three points are great, mm. but it means so much more than that. But I think what's what's the story and what is really interesting in terms of working out how this happened? How were Arsenal so good? against this Manchester City team. Why were Manchester City so insipid against this Arsenal team? It's It doesn't make sense. It like, does, though, isn't it? It why? does. It? Two best players are out. The two best players for Man City are not playing. But, and we're not, we're not just talking two best where... We're talking the two most influential. We're talking the two best in their positions in the world. The best number 10 in the world is out and the best CDM is out. And there you go. Ma Manchester City had less than four shots at goal. Mm. That hasn't happened to a Pep Guardiola team since 2010 when Espanyol played against Barcelona. So something, this is more historic Hunger, than you're desire. making. I mean, to go on and continue to do what they do year in, year out, is, is that what it is as well? Look, I don't, what I can't work out is why, despite the fact that the injuries were there, mm. there's still an awful lot of gifted players on the pitch. There's still Phil Foden, there's still Bernardo Silva, there's still Erling Haaland, and they didn't really threaten at all. I, I agree with that, but how gifted are the players on the pitch, really? What? No, no, it's Co like Kovacic. No, but it's as good as Kovacic is. Are we, we're not, we're, you know, we're not talking. He's one of the an incredible. He's an incredibly no, no, gifted. Incredibly gifted. We're not talking one of the best in the world in his position, are we? Though not, no, not, not really. No, no, of course not. Not really. But with with Phil Foden, what mm. what I am trying to get here, what I'm trying to drive home is the fact that there was an abundance of creativity and an abundance of goals on the pitch for Man City, mm. and yet Arsenal stopped them having any sort of chance of scoring a goal reduce them to less than four shots on goal something that hasn't happened to Guardiola since 2010 when he was in La Liga maybe we're surprised because we're not giving Arsenal enough credit maybe that's it I think Ma maybe that's it maybe I mean, that's it Declan Rice was a man possessed so he's everywhere I think everywhere. that's what it might be he was fantastic Saliba me and you spoke about mm. this on Friday and I said I'm really looking forward to seeing what Saliba could do because he is Virgil van dijk -esque when he came to Liverpool mm. he's massive massive frame you can't get past him faster than you stronger than you beat you in the air yeah and so, it's only what twenty three Saliba. Yeah. Incredible so is it is it as simple as that then? Maybe. So so why were why were Man City so insipid? The answer is Declan Rice. Could be that. Maybe you're right. Could be that. Maybe you're right. Yeah, like he controls it. He is. He's he's a genuine Rolls Royce of a midfielder. Like I still want him to score more, and I still want him to do a bit more than what he does. But in terms of what he does, just sitting and breaking up play, mm. and just being that six foot two guy that can bully you in the midfield, oh, mate. And that's that's why they bought him, isn't it? They bought him for games of this magnitude. Yeah. That's why the 105 million quid that they paid for him is actually looking like a bargain now. No, stop. Go 105 on. looking like a bargain. He's not doing Jude Bellingham stuff in Real Madrid, is he? Rice was the difference in that game yesterday. Declan Rice has swung three points in Arsenal's favour against the title rivals Man City, against the treble winners. If that isn't money well spent and therefore... No, 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 it's money well spent. I'm not sure, I'm just saying it's not a bargain. If it wins them the league... The first five million can ever be considered a bargain. It's, of course it can. No, it can't. Of course it can. Well, by, by that logic, no amount of millions can be considered a bargain for a footballer because we're existing in this world where money has, has changed meaning. No. He like Jude, Belling Jude Bellingham went, went he, for a fortune, he, he, he De now looks a bargain. Declan Rice had a very good game against Man City's B team midfield. Hooray. He's certainly not... 105 million bargain. Is it simple to say that when Rodri comes back and Kevin De Bruyne comes back, that's it, City just becomes City again? Yeah, I think so. I think I think they will. I think Rodri back in the team, it will do wonders for the confidence, it will do wonders for the strategy and wonders for the shape. So yes, having the best player in his position in the world back in that team <laughs> yeah, will have an impact. Right, yeah. Of course it will, and Kevin De Bruyne is is equally that as well. You know, when we, when we talk about Kevin De Bruyne, we're talking about a Premier League great. So yes, it's going to have an impact. But what this has done his absence this Arsenal victory I think it's changed the complexion of the Premier League it's changed the way that people are feeling about it because up until Rodri's suspension Manchester City had played 6-1-6 six, six. it was Pep Guardiola's best start to a season ever suddenly Arsenal have the momentum Arsenal were in the driving seat that's why I honestly think that this Declan Rice purchase can be considered a bargain because they bought a player who has totally changed their midfield, has strengthened their midfield. Remember, their midfield faltered when it most mattered. It creaked under an element, not even significant, but an element of pressure last year. But they had this start, though, with the midfield of Xhaka and Partey last season. They had a similar start. Remember, Arsenal were flying at the start of the season. Remember that? Mm. They were flying. So th this isn't... But this, this midfield, isn't but this midfield now 
with Rice has turned into a midfield that can keep Manchester City at bay. Something that hasn't happened at Arsenal since 2015. It's difficult to say this. I, I get what you're saying. Trust mm. me. I, but because he, because he wasn't playing against Rodri and De Bruyne, mm. that's what makes it hard for me to kind of, you know, give you the thumbs up of what you're saying. No, look, he scored the winner against Manchester United recently. Yeah. He's yeah. he's been man of the match against Manchester City recently. The big ones, the big games. You he's, are correct. It, big games. He, he cleared one off the line. He, what he did, he went under the radar, but was the warrior in the team. He was the personality in the team. He was the fighter in the team. He was think... sensational. And people will always focus on his, his goal contribution. But He's not there to score goals. Especially not in a game against Man there, City. He's not, he's not there to score goals. I, I agree. Do you think Pep was sort of scratching his head on the touchline thinking, one second, we were in the running for him and we just pulled out. They were running for him, right? There was a time we thought he was going to City. We thought, oh, Arsenal, Mate, you, missed, you missed the opportunity, Arsenal. Declan Rice is going to City. Mate. And then he, all of a sudden, Pep was like, no, don't fancy it anymore. Do you think Guardiola feels like a chump for helping Arteta sign him? A bit. He must do. And, and for giving him Zinchenko and Jesus. But all of a sudden, he must think, what, what have I been doing here? I mean, look, do you remember when that conversation happened? I think it was I think it was Eni Aluko spoke about... She did, and she got absolutely destroyed. But then it, was she? sort of proved... Correct. Correct. Yeah. So is it fair for me to say that Arteta was helped by Guardiola to sign Declan Rice. Is yes. that is that a fair assessment? Absolutely. If that is true, mm. he might have given him the title. That's terrible. In now, end, yeah, in the end of the season, yeah, it is isn't it? Because yeah. Declan Rice is looking like the difference maker. He's, he's looking. He's looking and, fantastic. And, and, and the other thing, Addy, when you look at the whole, remember Manchester City were flirt, flirting with the idea of signing Declan Rice. Mm. You look at the hole in the Manchester City midfield right now. Suddenly, you go Declan Rice in a sky blue shirt. They win the game. Declan Rice switches teams. The three points switches. Allegiance. Mm. It's it's all about Declan Rice, isn't it? And look, I don't want to do Gabriel a disservice here. I don't want to do arguably man of the match William Saliba a disservice here. His stats, by the way, I know that sometimes me and you are, uh, are fairly. No, 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 Saliba stats are insane. You see, yeah, Saliba's Salib sensational. Nobody dribbled past him. One hundred percent of the duels That's why won. Ninety. I, I said Van Dyke from three years ago. He's that guy. Yes, it's it's amazing. But I know the reason that Manchester City didn't sign Rice. They got Rodri. But I just wonder if they should have pursued their own strategy. Two world-class players per position. I think they tried to in Pakita. If, if it wasn't for that, remember the, the gambling issue that came up? Mm. And all of a sudden, he doesn't make the move. I think they were close to getting him. And in the end, I think it might. I still don't think but it's going to play an impact. A £105 season. million pound understudy, right, is what people would say. You can't be £105 million. Pound. You can't spend £105 million pounds and put it on the bench. Mm. But... They kind of spent that. They signed Nunes mm. for a decent amount of money. They signed Kovacic yeah. for quite a decent amount of money. They signed uh, Phillips for quite a decent amount of money. They signed... I know John Stones wasn't bought as a midfielder, but he's now a midfielder. So that's another 50 million quid. They've then got Oscar Bob um, in that position. They've also got Rico Lewis, who they're playing in that position. Who is very, very good. So all of those players that I've just mentioned combined, are you not better off just buying Rice? 